going to make a video on how to get um, bar data from interactive brokers. Um, first thing you need to know is you actually need uh, some data subscriptions and you can get it from like the um, uh, the IB web portal. Yeah, about $15 from the IB web portal. Um, portal, I can get, show you in another video how to do it, but first thing we want to do is, uh, remember bars are just like um, every day or every hour, every minute, you have open, high, low, close volume. Um, and you can get bars and interactive brokers um, with granularity of five seconds, one minute, one hour, one day, one month, and maybe a few combinations in between. You can get things like trades, which are the normal open, high, low, close volume we're used to. You can get bid, ask, midpoint, and option implied volatility are just a few examples of things you can get. Um, and uh, basically, like, um, you could also, there's another nice functionality. You can keep the bars up to date. So, like, if there's a new bar, meaning, like, um, let's say um, uh, now it's 355 and we have data up until 355, a new bar comes at 356. Um, it will continue to update the bars. So that's a really cool feature that they have. So let's show you how to do this. And also I'll show you how to um, get a large data set uh, between two different dates. So let's, uh, um, let's show you how to do this. So first thing we need to do is we need to connect to interactive brokers. So how are we gonna do that? We do the usual from ID and sync, import star util dot start loop. This is needed for Jupyter Notebooks. And now let's connect. We do IB equals IB, IB dot connect, port equals 4001. Oh, I guess I already have client ID equals one, so let's do client ID equals two. Okay, so we've connected. So now let's, let me show you how to get um, historical bars. Remember, for all the IB and sync things, you can just look at the API with TWS version, and you can get um, ideas of what's possible. So um, this link will show you like what's possible and more information. But um, let me just show you basically how to get historical bars. So there's this function called ib.rec historical data. And as you see, it needs a contract object, the end date time, a duration string, bar size settings. Um, duration string is like how much time worth of data. So it could be one day, one year, whatever. But for small um, bar size, um, you can only do like up to a day. I usually only keep the duration string as one day. You have what to show we mentioned earlier. You can do trades. You can do option implied volatility. You can do bid ask stuff. Um, you have this thing called use regular trading hours, whether you want it um, just for regular trading hours or not. And the cool thing is you have this keep up to date equals true or a false uh, true keeps it up to date. It's worth noting that the end date time, um, it can either be a date time object or a str or a empty string like this. The empty string uh, means until the current time, the la and it's also worth noting that you can only do keep up to date equals true if you have end equals empty string. So let's show an example of how to do that. So let's first create the contract. So we always use Tesla in our example. So let's do stock. You can also do options. Symbol equals Tesla. Um, exchange equals smart. Currency equals USD. And we have to qualify the contracts. The, uh, what does qualify the contracts do? And in case there's a missing property, it fills in all the missing properties, like contract ID and so on, as you see here. We only gave it th this three, but it added contract ID and so on. And if it's basically not unique, it complains and says there's a problem. Uh, okay, so now let's do the show how to do the request historical data. So you do contract equals contract. Um, wh what else did we have? We had end date time. First, I'll show you how to do the empty one, empty string. And then what else is there? There's, uh, there's uh, bar size settings. Let's do, uh, let's do five second bars because it's the best uh, for the example. Five seconds, duration string. Oh, I guess they want duration string first maybe. Uh, sometimes they want the order. 
uh, the raising screen, let's do uh, one uh, day. I think it's important to, um, I, I only do one day because um, for small sizes like this, more than one day, a few days starts giving you uh, errors. And by the way, you can get all the formats and all that stuff in the uh, link here. Um, but if you have an error in your format, it'll give you a hint as to how to fix it. So what else do we need? We needed what to show. Let's do trades. You can also do, uh, by the way, you can also do like adjusted last. Let me write it here. Adjusted last. This adjusts for dividends. But I like to adjust for dividends myself because that way you can add to existing data and you don't have to create new data. So look, okay, this is what to show is trades. And let's, for now, let's do keep up to date equals false. And let's use use uh, use regular trading hours equals false because currently I'm pre-market and uh, I want to get data that's available pre-market. So let me just show you guys how this looks. So this bars thing gives me a list of bars. And the first bar, because um, we did one day as the duration, first bar is the beginning of the day, which is 4 Eastern. That's when pre-market opens. You see you have the open, high, low, close volume. And the last bar is, um, is uh, the last bar up until uh, we, we ran the function. So in this case, just to show you, the last bar is, um, is at um, 7.45 Eastern in 10 seconds. What's worth noting is I can click this a lot of times and it'll maintain the same values. But if I were to do keep up to date equals true, then it's up until 45.35. Five seconds later, it'll be 45.40. Five seconds later, it'll be 45.45 uh, and so on. You can also do something like this. You can do uh, um, a... Um, uh, um, you can create uh, a call a, a, a callback to handle bar updates. So you can do something like def on bar update uh, bars uh, has new bar, and then you can do something like if has new bar print uh, bars uh, negative one the last bar and has a uh, new bar. Uh, sorry, let's print uh, the uh, closing price and the uh, uh, date. So let's show you how this is done. You can add it to like bars that update event uh, plus equals on bar update um, that attaches the callback to this bars object. But um, if you run this a few times, it'll like double run the, the on bar update. So we want to make sure we clear it before we run it every time. So as you see now, every time there's a new bar, you're going to get a uh, the date and you're going to get the closing value, which uh, could, you, can, you can understand how this could be useful later on when you're doing a trading strategy. Okay, but for now, let's just clear this thing and let's uh, show you another cool method. There's this thing called util.df um, bars. This converts it to a data frame. So you have this data frame, uh, and that's really cool utility that makes the list of bars into a data frame. One thing I wanted to show you is, uh, is let's now like um, uh, show how you can actually have like an end date time. Um, I think it's important to note that um, end date time, um, uh, let me maybe right here, um, that like if uh, if it is a date, um, you get entire days worth of data for that date. If date time only goes up till that date time. So later on, I'm going to want to do things um, uh, one day at a time. So it's much better to use the date. So let's show you how to do it with the date. So uh, uh, import date time dot, um, let's try yesterday's date. I'm purposely going to have an error uh, because I'm, I still have keep up to date equals true and it doesn't support it. Um, 
if uh, you you write the end date time. So what's the year? The year is two. Yesterday was two thousand twenty-three. Uh, tw uh, tw uh, month is uh, eleven, and day is uh, twenty-two. Okay. So ooh, uh, see, end date not supported by live updates. These error messages are really good. They tell you everything usually. So let's just get rid of this uh, thing. And, and and you know what? Let's actually do uh, use regular trading hours equal to true. Then you'll see the normal trading hours. Uh, I have a mistake. Uh, maybe I have a mistake. Uh, year 2023, month equals 11, day equals this. What do I have that's a mistake? Hmm. Uh, it's weird. Uh, I don't know what that mistake is, but uh, for some reason it's not liking this. Use regular trading hours thing. Um, yeah, I have to think about it later. Uh, maybe, um, maybe use regular trading hours. There's a problem with uh, with a specifying date this way, and you have to have a date time. But anyways, uh, what this does is um, now, worst case scenario, you want it in regular trading hours. You can do a between uh, time method. So I'll show you how to do that. Um, so by the way, so um, now uh, since we specified uh, eleven twenty two, uh, if we look at the DF, we use this utility. You see, we have the full data for eleven twenty two. So the first bar is four Eastern, which is the start of trading. Um, oh, sorry, eleven twenty two. Oh, I know why there's a problem because. Uh, the sorry, the day hasn't uh, finished, so it gives you um, a problem with regular trading hours. Oh, I know why there's a problem because I'm at um, November twenty second, and it's still pre market, so of course it's going to give you an issue. So let's back to use regular trading hours equals true. Now you see um, if I do this method, I'm going to get data from nine thirty Eastern to four. This is the last five second bar. So that works. Um, so now I just wanted to say like um, you, when you're doing machine learning and things like that, you want to create like a data frame for a long period of time. And um, basically, if you want to use high granularity data like five seconds, you can't, you have to split up uh, the functions above into many things. So I'm going to share a function below that will um, get data uh, for a longer period of time. And, um, uh, and and it's on my GitHub, and you can you can see it. And basically, let me just show you how it's used. Let's say I I'll do something like df equals get historical data, and then I'll specify a symbol, and then I'll do a start date in this format: two thousand twenty three eleven ten to uh, end date equals two thousand twenty three. 11, uh, let's say until yesterday. So I have this DF thing. Um, I'll explain the other stuff below. So I have 11.10 um, is the first day, 4 Eastern. And 11.21 is the last day, um, 7.55 uh, Eastern, which is the end of, um, it, which is the end of after hours. Um, so the function basically, uh, the idea is you go one date at a time uh, otherwise, you'll get an error if you try to get w everything at once. Um, so, and then you're going to combine the files. The idea is to save each file because um, if your internet has an issue or something like that, you don't want to start from scratch. And you want to use Panda's market calendars to make sure you're iterating over valid days. So we're going to basically have a date range. We iterate over that date range. Uh, we're going to call the function above, save each file. Uh, days worth of data to a file and then at the end we're going to combine everything okay so just uh briefly how i'm doing it i have this like parse read and parse method i do uh tz that localize um basically because time zones that get really really annoying and it's kind of better to just assume you're eastern so this data is an eastern but like sometimes the opposite is plus five from gmt or plus four so I prefer for every um, CSV um, I've saved and created, I prefer just to get rid of the time zone information. 
So this uh, is the helper method that you read the CSV and you get rid of the time zone information. Okay, so the main idea of this function is just you give it a symbol um, and the symbol, uh, sorry, it's a little disorganized, but uh, the symbol, with the symbol you create the contract object, you qualify the contract object, um, you get um, your start and end date um, in uh, daytime format, and you get a list of dates between those two dates that fit with the uh, New York Stock Exchange calendar. You're going to iterate over those dates. Um, uh, sorry, first before that, you're going to create a folder to store these files in. And um, you're going to iterate over the dates. For each day, you're going to get the historical bars for that day. Um, and once you're done iterating over the dates, you're going to combine them at the end, um, sort it by date, and then you return the data frame. So as you see here, you get the actual result. Again, this is my GitHub, uh, but um, that's how you could create, get data for um, a long uh, range of dates. And it is important to split things up because it, it, it crashes all the time. So it's very important to split things up. Okay, hope you enjoyed.